Welcome to Book Time with Ryan. I am Ryan, and today I will be talking about Thank You for Smoking by Christopher Buckley, a novel. Uh, this book is about Nick Naylor, who is the chief spokesman for the Academy of Tobacco Studies, which is the main lobbying body for the tobacco industry. And it is a national bestseller. Look at that. There's cigarettes. Now, I don't smoke. I've never smoked. I had a dream or two in my life where for some reason I liked eating cigarettes. But I don't know why I had those dreams. I've never tried a cigarette. I don't want to. But a lot of people do. And not good for you. So right off the bat, kids, don't smoke. Adults, don't smoke. I did go to a smoking cessation class uh, with an ex. And I learned about how hard it is to quit smoking. And also the most effective way, which is nicotine replacement therapy. Um, the nasal sprays that give you kind of a, a shot of nicotine and it takes people generally i think three up to six times attempts to quit so it's very addictive but this is well the new york times says that this is a savagely funny satirical farce producing moments that make you laugh out loud at their inspired absurdity the i think the weirdest thing about this is a lot of it does not feel that absurd. Uh, let's see, when was this written? This was written in 1994. Which was now, oh my gosh, that was 30 years ago. It's a great book. Let's see what the San Francisco Chronicle says. Christopher Buckley's caricatures of Washington politics, corporate power plays, media spin control, Hollywood pretensions, and the human foibles of self-destruction and denial are appallingly right on the money. There, I agree with that. All right, so we have Nick Naylor. We're going to call him Nick. He works for the Academy of Tobacco Studies, ATS. And regularly, he has lunch with two other chief spokespeople, uh, Polly and Bobby. Bobby is what would be kind of the NRA of this fictional world. He is the chief spokesman for the gun lobby. And Polly is the chief spokeswoman for the alcohol lobby. They call themselves the Mod Squad. It's the lunch, the meeting of the Mod Squad. The Mod being the merchants of death. And they all know what the problems are with their industries. And that's probably one of the most realistic things. Is They have their talking points. And they have their ability to make arguments. And they have their bridges to what they want to say if they're being interviewed. Uh, but they all know what's true and what's not true. They would give what we call hacks and flacks, hacks being reporters and flacks being the PR people. They would give PR people kind of a bad name, except that they're very effective in what they're doing. We have a very unpopular person, Nick, who is taking on all the anti-tobacco or the, I think you call them new puritanism. Uh, people out there, especially the National Institute of Health from the Department of Health and Human Services, CDC, so that's NIH, CDC, um, other bodies, women or mothers against smoking, stuff like that. He's taking them all on. There's a new CEO for his organization, but the longtime chairman, who is of an earlier generation, is really, they call him the captain. He is really kind of the master of it all. And he likes Nick. Well, Nick is going on these shows and doing all this kind of spin for the tobacco industry. And he's on Larry King Live. This is 1994. So it is kind of dated with the references, but I, I, I like that too. There's a threat. There's a called in threat. All of a sudden, his organization gives him a security detail. But he doesn't like it and he tries to throw them off. And while he's trying to throw them off, he is 
abducted, kidnapped, and kind of not really tortured, but um, hurt. And when he wakes up, he has nicotine patches all over his body. He's getting a nicotine overdose, and his heart is pumping. He's picked up by some, I think, Capitol Police. No, they might be Park Police. He goes Park Police on the mall. And he is saved at a, at a hospital. He's actually partially saved because he consumed so much nicotine that his body was able to handle the overload of nicotine. And then he spends time trying to figure out who did it. And he's kind of bouncing back. Because he had so much nicotine, he doesn't really want to... He doesn't want to smoke. And there's all this kind of pressure or, or desire to figure out what's happening. And, and his organization really uses his kidnapping and near death to their advantage. He's in, he's, he's heading off to, to Hollywood to try to get more smoking placements in films to make smoking look cool and sexy again. And then he realizes that he is the center of an FBI investigation that he thought was going to help him find the people who kidnapped him. And the theory is that he may have kidnapped himself or staged a kidnapping to, to get the support that the industry needs, which is pretty extreme, not accurate, but uh, there's a lot of kind of damning stuff going that way. And then it ends with things happening. I'm not going to tell you what. This is not a long book. This is this book was yeah, this is the paperback. Um, it was 272 pages long. 272. Fast read. I, I've had other stuff going on, but it was still a fast read for me. I read it whenever I could. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, I am a a a flack. Um, I work in Washington, D.C., and that's where most of this took place. And it was really interesting to see not only the kind of the politics and the locations uh, inside D.C. or the Beltway, also interesting to see how public affairs was portrayed, public relations was portrayed in this book, because uh, I thought it was, it was fairly accurate. I mean, some of the stuff that he was doing is really pretty accurate as far as tools that they can use in 94, um, things they want to avoid and the thought process for a lot of stuff. I, I found it fairly accurate, dated fairly accurate though. And uh, I mean, it's not for an industry that's ever gonna come out as a good guy. It's not the, the industry of heroes, the, the smoking community, but I mean, there are ways that they can kind of frame the conversation so it's not as much about the company is making billions off of smoking. It's about your free choice as an American to, to decide what you want to do or don't want to do with your body. And centuries old industries like the tobacco farming community. I liked it. I gave it five stars. I brought it up to somebody and they said that Christopher Buckley died of throat cancer. I don't know if that's true. I haven't actually Googled him. I mean, he looks... Not old, but he looks, he's not young in his picture. He's not super young in his picture in the back. And this is from you know, 30 years ago. So I don't know how old he would be now. And I, I didn't take the time to look that up, but that would be interesting if, if that is how he died, because this is, I, I think it's, it's really well done. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. I have seen the movie. It was years ago. I think it came out in 2006. So I kind of want to watch that again and see how it compares because I, I don't remember much from the movie. I liked it. I just, I don't know. I, mean, I want to kind of see it again and see how it compares. So maybe I'll do that. I'll do a kind of a comparison video of the book to the movie. But as far as the book goes, loved it. Five stars. Go into it understanding that you're going to be siding with, a lot of times, the guy that is working for an industry that has done a lot of bad. And... I think the honesty that the character Nick has with himself, but still doing bad, is not eye-opening, but makes you think. So, thank you for smoking. Like Christopher Buckley, five stars. Remember, don't smoke. Say no to drugs and cigarettes. 
you can. And if you are smoking, eh, try to stop. It's not good for you. Thanks for being here today. I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye.